All right, so this is Amy from the Five Waiting Wounds, um, and today we're going to be going over the breakdown of a semen analysis um, and also what happens when things are abnormal. So this is going to be take two for me for doing this, so I'm going to dive right in so that uh, hopefully I don't go over. Okay, so I'm basically going to go over my husband's semen analysis test and what they checked for and I'll let you know what everything is and then what happens should anything be um, abnormal. Okay. So first they did the time collected, the time that it was received in the lab, um, last ejaculate day, so the last time, you know, he ejaculated, how many days before this, the test was done. Um, the volume, um, now as far as amount, of ejaculate, they're looking for anything more than two milliliters. Um, anything between, I think, two and six is considered normal. Anything under two, and it's a little bit of a concern, and again, anything over six is, is also a little bit of a concern. Um, uh, for the motility, uh, they're looking for greater than 40%. Um, and motility is anything, like they want to see that the sperm are moving. They want to see a good forward progression. And an overall amount, they want to see that at least 40% of them are moving. Um, the activity score, um, they're looking for greater than 2. The forward progression, they're looking for greater than 2. Um, and now in the count, Section. Um, they're looking for two different numbers. Um, the concentration, they're looking for 20 million sperm per milliliter. And now since they're looking for at least two milliliters of ejaculate, they want to see at least 40 million sperm total. Um, now uh, you get into the morphology. Um, and now there's a couple of different ways that this can be read. You can give an overall generalization of the morphology, which is the defects of the sperm. Um, and uh, the World Health Organization originally said that anything greater than 30%, so anything more than 20%, uh, they want to see at least, sorry, they want to see at least 30% normal looking sperm. Anything more than that is great, but anything under that was a concern. Now, they went back and revised it, and they said that anything over 14% normal is, um, is great. Um, and that's where me and my husband have our difficulty, is in the morphology section. Um, now, what they did for me is a little bit different. I don't have an overall percentage. Um, sorry, not me, my husband, didn't get an overall percentage. What they did was they broke it down um, into head defects, neck and mid-piece defects, tail defects, and the cytoplasmic droplets. And what they did was they gave a percentage um, for each one, which was 5%, no, sorry, 12%, my bad, 12%. And um, and then what they did is they did a TZI index, teratozospermia index. I am horrible at pronouncing things, so my apologies. What I'll do is I'll put, um, sorry, I'll put the link in the sidebar, or the name of it in the sidebar so you can see it. You don't got to rely on my horrible pronunciation. But what the TZI index is, is basically they take 200 sperm at random and they divide them into the good sperm and the bad sperm. And then they look at the bad sperm, and they count how many defects total. Not per sperm, but just how many total defects there are. And then they divide it, uh, that number, by the amount of defected sperm. And then that comes up with a ratio. And um, the ratio should be uh, a TZI equal to or less than 1.60 is ideal. And what that number actually means, it's, it's on average how many defects per sperm. So you don't want to see any more than 1.6 defects on any given sperm. That's what they did for my husband. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the TGI index because I think cause it, it doesn't really tell you anything 
about how many total defected sperm there are. Um, it just gives you an average of how many defects there are per sperm, like I said. Um, and I kind of think like one defect on the sperm is enough. This is my own personal opinion. Um, but in any event, that's how the lab does it where I'm from. And it's the only lab that I have to work with. So that is the breakdown. Oh, sorry. I totally missed a couple of things. Uh, the other things were the pH level, um, and they're looking for 7.8 to 8.1, and the pH is basically the acidity of the semen. They obviously don't want it to be too acidity because it will kill the sperm. Um, and the other thing is the liquefaction time, or the viscosity, and what that means is Basically, when the semen comes out, it's sort of um, a gel, a thick gel when it comes out. And over time, it liquefies, and that allows um, the sperm to obviously travel, you know, up the vagina, through the cervix, through the uterus, through the tube, through the fallopian tube, into the egg. Um, and they want that time to be uh, around 20 minutes, but anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour is considered normal. Um, and obviously, if um, if it's not liquefying, then the sperm is getting stuck inside the gel and it's not able to be released. Um, and so obviously then it's harder or impossible <laughs> if no sperm are getting out for any sperm to get to the egg. Now, as far as things that can be done, I'm going to put a link in the sidebar. Um, for you to check out some of our videos. I know myself, Kaylin, and Susie all did videos on how to deal with uh, male factor infertility. And we, there's, uh, we mentioned a few ways um, that you can deal with um, sperm count, motility, morphology, um, in ways of vitamins and lifestyle choices. So I will direct you to that, those videos uh, with some links. Uh, but I mean, then there are the obvious things that can be done if you have a lower count um, you know, an IUI might be an option for you as so you can get more sperm closer to to the egg. They don't have to travel as far. Um, if you have a motility issue as well, IUI would be an option for you because, again, um, it gets the sperm closer to the egg so it doesn't have to swim as far. Um, if you have a morphology issue, um, IUI is sometimes an option, um, but IVF might be an option, um, and even IVF with the form of ICSI, which is where they actually take the sperm and the egg and they inject the, the sperm directly into the egg, rather than having the egg in a petri dish and then just putting the sperm on top of it and then letting nature take its course kind of thing, which is what regular IVF is. Um, but really, those two are the main things um, that are the options when you have a, um, an abnormal semen analysis. Now, as far as uh, the specific question that we had from a, from a viewer was, what would be my uh, husband's options uh, since he has um, the viscosity, uh, like his liquefaction time, his, uh, it doesn't liquefy, or it doesn't liquefy fast enough? And actually, I did some research, and IUI is an option for you because when they do the wash, it actually extracts the sperm from the gel, and so they can use it in the IUI. So IUI would be an option for you if uh, the liquefaction time is not fast enough or it doesn't liquefy at all. So those are just some options. Um, if you have any other questions, definitely feel free to ask. Uh, but that's it for now. Comment below and uh, let me know if you, uh, if you have anything else. All right. Bye for now.